What's the best way to destroy the sun? <laughs> okay, cute idea. The fire department spray water all over it and put it out? <laughs> it's not a campfire, it's a gravity-confined nuclear fusion reactor. The equivalent of feeding dough to an oven and hoping the oven stops baking. Well, kind of. The problem is the sun is not a fire, it's not burning. The sun shines right. not because of combustion, but because, well, it's so big. The gravitational force caused by its mass is powerful enough to fuse atoms together in the core. This causes them to release energy, sunlight. Adding water to the sun would only make it more massive, increase- Yeah, that's exactly right. Add mass, raise core pressure and temperature. Fusion's gonna speed up. More fuel, faster burn. Gravitational pressure that causes fusion. So instead of fizzling out, it would burn brighter. But the brighter it burns, the faster it runs out of- Okay, so he's gonna say maybe because you're ultimately shorting the sun's overall lifespan. Clever. As I pointed out 12 years ago, 20 solar masses of water added to the sun would shrink its expected remain- 20 solar masses of water. So remodeling multiple solar systems to affect just one is what it would take to pull this off. Okay. Lifetime from 5 billion years to only a few hundred million. But if you can't wait that long, I suggest something more sinister than water. Water! <laughs> if you sprayed the sun so powerfully that its matter was scattered across space, it would no- Okay, he's getting into gravitational binding energy. ...have the critical density needed for fusion to occur. It would be snuffed out, but only so long. So to do that, you would need to unbind the sun, and that takes 10 to the 41 power joules. Nukes are not that powerful. It's needing the planet's annual energy output times a very, very large number. Impossible for all practical purposes. Like Alex Mack or the T-1000, a scattered sun can reconstitute itself slowly over time under its own gravity. Sure, it can gravity. re-collapse. Yep. The only way to make sure that doesn't happen is to spread its guts widely enough beyond what's known as the gene's length. The gene is a critical radius at which a cloud of gas and dust's thermal energy, the motion of its molecules which causes it to expand. I mean, sure, if you disperse material that thermal motion defeats gravity, it won't re-collapse. But for the sun, your escape velocity is 600 kilometers per second, which at that mass, again, 10 to the 41 power joules. No longer counteract the effects of gravity bringing it together, and it collapses. Our sun's gene's length is astronomical. Literally, it's at least 10,000 astronomical units. I was gonna say, yeah, you'd be into deep interstellar space at this point. That's 250 times wider than our solar system. <laughs> so destroying the sun isn't a physics problem we're about to solve. It's a plumbing invoice from space with an astronomical budget.